I'm Bill Bratton. This is my wife, Mary. We're here today uh, to talk about the event, September 11th. And um, we lost our daughter, Michelle Renee. And uh, hopefully we can share some of our views with you. The thing I remember first, mostly, um, is that it was the most peaceful day, beautiful day. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. And um, we woke up to a phone call from my daughter, um, who was attending a meeting at the uh, World Trade Center. And uh, she had just gotten there uh, and got up to 105th floor. 105th floor. And then the plane struck. I guess that would be the second plane for building one. No, it was the first first plane that hit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Mary was on the phone first, and um, obviously we were, she was taken very uh, quickly and with emotion, and that she um, started talking to her, oh my God, you know, this. and then I took the phone because I knew something was terribly wrong, and I hadn't seen any of the news yet. And uh, she told me what happened, and she said there was fire everywhere, smoke. And I said, well, we still, still ticking. I said, don't go to an elevator. You're gonna have to walk your way out of the building. And um, get downstairs and uh, I'll come get you. And that I love you. And those were the last times we spoke. She was uh, 23 years old. Uh, bright, uh, vivacious, just uh, energetic. Right, just starting out her life. Mm -hmm. um, just tell us a little bit about Michelle and um, yeah. the type of person she was. Um, Michelle was very fun-loving, very outgoing, help anybody, no matter what time of day or night. Um, she was Johnny on the spot. In, in college, she um, joined a sorority. Um, and wanted everyone in there to join it. She was like, you know, the mentor. And um, fun loving. Her smile would light up a room. You know, it was like the party didn't start till she got there. Um, she, um, she was a big team player. Oh yeah. I uh, participatory. Um, she was involved in everything, swimming, diving. Um, taking care of kids. Chorus. Chorus. Lifeguard. Uh, she had just accepted this job at, um, in the Cantor Fitzgerald. And uh, she was there, I would say, no more than five weeks when September 11th arrived. So she was very excited by the job. Matter of fact, the night before, they were Mary and Aaron and uh, Michelle were riding across the uh, Slides Neck Bridge. And it was a very clear night. And you could see the Twin Towers in the uh, distance. And she was so excited because she said, you know, she said to her mother, I work in the one with the spindle on top, which would be tower number one. And Becoming a teacher and coach, is that yes, correct? She wanted to. she wanted to be a history teacher. She loved history and she loved um, diving and um, in Pine Bush she had um, I, she had attained top top diver in the, in the swim team and then went on to Oswego where she graduated from and when she first got there it was like be at the pool at 4:30 in the morning and then come back and get ready to work the day but so the 4.30 in the morning, she thought, mm, I don't know. So she didn't, she said, I don't know if I want to do this. So for six months, she didn't dive and then she missed it terribly. The dive coach was like, come on back. So she attained number one for them. Yeah. Um, made it all the way to what, the, the states up there well, in Buffalo? Well, whatever the state division in of Buffalo. diving is, yeah. New York State Athletic Division. And she came in third place there. Yeah. Well, 
I think the uh, emotions scared about for a lot of things, obviously concerned for Michelle, uh, but also on a global standpoint, it's like when, you know, the, the plane hit the first tower, then hit the second tower, and then the plane went into the Pentagon, and then you heard about the plane out in Shanksburg, and then you're like, I mean, this doesn't happen here. This is like, you know, we're on the precipice of a war here. And, you know, and our own personal freedoms, the airline system, is being used against us. And it was a lot to, a lot to take in. I mean, I'm sure it was for everybody. I mean, adding Michelle's personal piece to it, it you know, just made it that much more... Uh, traumatic, I guess. And if you wanted to add anything just as a, um, as a mother. Um... Yeah, well, I remember that morning very clearly. Um, the sky was bluer than blue. The window was open, the curtains were flying, and Bill was on a conference call at work. And my father-in-law came up to say that Michelle was on the phone. So I went downstairs and there was nobody there. So I was like, all right, well, I knew she had to be in early for a meeting. And um, that, that, that. It, was, it, it was all all so surreal. It was like, my God, this, when the phone call came in to Bill and he was on the conference call and I had gone to answer the phone that my father-in-law, you know, said Michelle was on the phone. I came back upstairs, I laid down the bed, and all I, all I could say was like, my God, look at how beautiful this day is. The, the sky is so, it's so vivid blue. And Bill turned around and he goes, oh my God, he says, I have to go. My daughter works there and I'm thinking, what? So he, he I jumped out of the bed, he comes around, he grabs me by the shoulders and he goes, ma, plane just flew through the World Trade Center. I was like, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. That's all I could get out. And now knowing that the phone was, was empty um, and nobody was on the other end, I, um, I was like, oh my God, you know, she was trying to get a hold of us. So the only thing I wanted to do was get down to the television and see what's going on. It was like, it was quarter, quarter to nine, 10 of nine. And I got downstairs in the kitchen. Bill's father was sitting in the living room reading the paper and we came down the stairs and all I could get out of my mouth was Jesus, Mary and Joseph, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And Bill's dad says, well, what, what's the matter? And Bill goes, dad, a plane flew through the World Trade Center and that's where Michelle works. So got into the kitchen and turned on the TV and there was the building with the black smoke just like billowing out. And I'm thinking, oh my God, if she's above that cut in the building from the plane, there's no way she's getting out, no way. So at that, the phone rang and I picked it up, it was right behind me. And it was Michelle, I said, like, hello, and she goes, mom. I'm like, Michelle, my God, where are you? Mom, I think I'm on the 105th floor. Mom, it's hot. Mom, it's smoky. Mom, please help me get out. Monotone. So I knew she was overcoming with smoke. And I said, I, I lost it. I, I hit the floor. I, I was, dear God, Shelly, I just, I, I hit the floor. Bill took the phone and um, told her to remember her life-saving ability, you know, stay with the people you're with, try and get something wet over your face, um, keep trying to get out, we're coming to get you. And um, just prior to our phone call, she had called Erin, Erin also worked in the city on Park Avenue, and she wanted to know, you know, what happened. Apparently, Erin um, said that she was caught in an elevator when the plane stuck, um, struck the building. Um, so they were between floors and they had to climb out. So she said to Erin, she says, 
I lost my, my brand new shoes. I lost my pocketbook. What, I don't know what to do. She says, so Erin Aaron said to her, don't worry about anything. I, it's, it's just a small plane. Just get out of the building. We'll go for a pedicure, manicure. I'll buy you new pocketbook shoes. Just get out of the building. And um, at that point, um, the second plane hit. And I was like, that doesn't happen in America. What, what's going on? I mean, this is, this is crazy. Is, is maybe the pilot saw the first plane hit? I mean, like what I'm thinking was like, I mean, this, this totally does not happen here. And it was insane. And then all of a sudden I had this angst and I don't know what it was, but I kept screaming at Bill. My God, my God, please tell everybody to get away from the buildings. They're going to fall down. And I was screaming. Bill's like, Bill, Mary, the, the police, the fire department, they're all right there. Everybody's there. They're going to get everybody out that they can. And um, I was like, Bill, you got you to gotta call down there because those buildings are going to fall down on top of them. And... Um, then I remember my sister-in-law was getting ready to go back to um, to Phoenix because she was in here for an interview at, I think, Cornell. And the, they closed the airports and everything. Um, so she, she gave me a Xanax because I was like beside myself. But I was like, no, I have to know what's going on. I have to be cognizant. I said, you know, I said, I think I want to go down to church. So I went, we went down to the church and a whole lot of people just were all coming in. And um, I even went into the rectory and I, I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know, what, I, well, I just wanna pray, but I think my daughter's dead. I think we lost her in the World Trade Center. I said, you know, we got a phone call. She was up on 105th floor. And between the time that the buildings fell down, there was, there was not enough time. And if she was barefoot, certainly she would not have gotten out. Got a, when the, the day started, and I was on a conference call, um, and I believe the first plane struck at 8.31, and the second plane at 8.46. So, and, um, you know, when somebody on the conference call says, uh, Oh, a plane flew into the World Trade Center. Well, you're not picturing a commercial airliner flying into the World Trade Center. Because, you know, commercial airlines don't do that. You're picturing some two-seater uh, private plane who, you know, something happened. It was, uh, so by the time we got to the picture, the vision of it, um, it was overwhelming. It's very difficult to get up in the morning and relive those hours. As you know, you turn on any television set, the tolling bells, the reading names, the um, and it each minute kind of drives you as to what were you doing at that particular time. And you know, I mean, time does blur your memory a bit, but. It brings it all back in a rush. I mean, um, it's it's tough, and then you have we have you know Billy, Michelle, and, I mean, excuse me, Billy, Aaron, and Chris, and the grandkids who never met Michelle. So, I mean, what a talking counseling. That 20 years it's like it's 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 not even 20 years for me it's an every it's every day um, the fact that it is 20 years is immeasurable I it's like it's hard to comprehend that it's been that long um, Michelle's with me all the time you know I have questions and answers during the day and I'll hear her kind of inspiration. Um, the one thing too that Michelle being like very outgoing and fun loving and 
she always said, you know, keep moving. So that was always the what brings me back to every day to, you know, keep moving. Um, her, one, her one thing that inspired me is live for me, live for me, because that's what she would do. She lived every day. She, in 23 years, she lived more life than people in 100 years, because she, that's how she was. She lived life. And um, that's what inspired me, the, her voice saying, Mom. I, I could have curled up and went in a cocoon, but it was Mom lived for me. Lived for me. So that's what we do. And we have a granddaughter that is named after Michelle, and she just turned 16. It's hard to believe that she's 16. <laughs> but yeah. and. The grandkitties, they all, they all know Michelle because we talk about her all the time and with her pictures and they always want to know, you know, what, what was she like and what did she do and, oh, she's so pretty and, you know, they, the kids pick her out of the pictures, you know, they know mommy and daddy and Aunt Michelle, so we do keep her alive. She, uh, before her death and after her death, she inspired us to greater heights, to do bigger things, to do better things than we've ever done before. Um, just to use a silly one, um, I was not much for public speaking before Michelle's death. I would uh, delegate it to somebody else to take care of, but now it's what would Michelle want me to do? And Michelle, for us, let me answer that one first. I mean, she was here for a short time and we certainly saw all the potential that Michelle was bringing to the world. And um, the loss of all that is obviously difficult. For somebody else, for me to say is that if you met her, you wouldn't forget her. Um, yeah, you, w you wouldn't forget her. Um, she was fun-loving, outgoing, outspoken, um, caring. Um, if you needed something, she was, she was there for you. Um, even if she was tired, she'd get up out of a nap and, and run and go help you. Um, and I mean, being a mentor in, in college, too, um, for the sorority, um, she wanted every girl to be in there. You can do it. If I did it, you can do it. So she was, you know, she'd push. You know, come on, you can do better. You can always do better. And um, her laughter, her smile, they would capture you, and you would not, you would not forget it. She didn't believe in doing anything halfway. No, it was all or nothing. And um, it really would have been interesting to see where she would be 20 Today. years later. Today.